Welcome to a Smite God Spotlight featuring Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. Artemis is a very strong physical damage dealer. She prides herself in her ability to control team fights and dish out awe-inspiring damage. She is quite capable in any lane, even the solo hard lane, when in two versus one situations. Where you choose to play her depends mainly on your team's god composition and personal preference. Artemis's passive is still target. For every successive attack, Artemis gains a stack of still target that grants her plus 5% chance to critically strike. This will stack up to 3 times for a total of plus 15% critical strike. Artemis's first ability is Transgressor's Fate. This is a trap that is placeable at Artemis's feet and can only be triggered by enemy gods. Enemy gods that come within 5 feet of the trap will activate it rooting them in place for 3 seconds and suffering physical damage. Artemis can have up to 3 traps at one time. Artemis' second ability is Vengeful Assault. When activated, Artemis increases her attack speed by up to 75% for 5 seconds at max level. While Vengeful Assault is active, Artemis' golden bow is infused with energy and is quite noticeable. This is Artemis' steroid ability and is what makes her a late game powerhouse. Artemis' third ability is Suppress the Insulin. Artemis fires a volley of arrows at the target ground location, dealing physical damage and slowing all enemies hit by 25% for 2 seconds. This has a fairly long range, but a medium sized area of effect. Artemis' ultimate ability is Infamous and is what makes her name send chills down her enemy's spine. In ancient times, Artemis sent a gigantic boar to ravage Calidon to punish those who would not worship her. When activated, Artemis calls upon this Caledonian boar, which will linger for 6 seconds. The Caledonian boar will vigilantly target enemy gods and charge them, dealing a large amount of physical damage and stunning both the enemy god and himself. The boar cannot stun the same god twice, and since it stuns itself for 2 seconds, it can only stun 3 gods inside of its 6 second duration. For skill build, I start with Suppress the Insulin at levels 1 and 3, and get Transgressor's Fate at level 2. This provides me a strong counter push, and I use the traps to defend myself in case I'm in a lane that may be visited by an enemy jungler. After this, I alternate between Suppress the Insolent and Vengeful Assault, maxing Suppress the Insolent first. Leveling up Transgressor's Fate gives a small damage increase, but improving Vengeful Assault will prove to be a greater overall damage boost. I take Caledonian Boar at every opportunity, as it scales very well. For items, I almost always start out with level 2 Warrior's Tabi and Health Potions. Next, I buy Devourer's Gloves to gain stacks early. I then finish my boots and work towards a Frostbound Hammer. I follow this with a Deathbringer, Cheen's Blades, and a Titan's Bane. My ability items are very run of the mill. I like to grab a Meditation early when I can spare 500 gold, as Artemis has mana problems early on. I then work in Purification Beads, an Aegis Amulet, Creeping Curse, or Sprint, depending on the game. This item build is for a very standard game. Titan's Bane, along with Sheen's Blade's proc, will allow you to burn down the tankiest of foes. If the game carries on for too long, consider replacing Devourer's Gloves with a Brawler's Beat Stick. Sometimes it can be tricky for ranged gods to get last hits. If the menu you want to last hit is in the middle, try moving into melee range to get the last hit. If the minion numbers dwindle, consider going in to trade hits. As long as you can dodge their spells, very few gods can trade basic attacks with Artemis early on. Never underestimate the power of Transgressor's Fate. A well-placed trap can ensure the kill. Once in the mid-teens, go for the Gold Fury Lair often. It is best to enter into the jungle camp and face outward so you can see. I hear Sobek coming up from behind me so I turn to face him. When in the jungle, make sure to abuse your traps flagrantly. Here I move around the trap I placed earlier and force Sobek to dodge it. Here I demonstrate a technique I call tower dipping. Many ranged gods can perform this, but Artemis excels at it with her high speeds. I dip in just close enough to hit the tower and move out before the tower sends out an attack. With enough practice, Artemis can take down towers without the help of minions. Artemis's traps can be used to completely cut off an area. Most players are used to avoiding these traps, so instead of scattering your traps, consider concentrating them and then leading towards the area where they are placed. Most jungle entrances and exits can be completely shut down using two traps, meaning if you need a safe place to run, you will know where to go. Planning ahead can make Artemis very difficult to gank. 
The Caledonian Boar opens you up for a perfect combination. Activate your ultimate and run in close to place a trap on your enemy. When the stun ends, they will trigger the trap for a significant combined crowd control. Practice patience whenever you get the chance. I head over to the left lane for a gank, but stop as I see the enemy team's mid player leaving the lane. I hide out a line of sight until I see that he has gone, and then go in to gank the lane without worry he'll interfere. Gods like Artemis can be referred to as a ticking time bomb. The later the game gets, the more terrifying she becomes. When you are nearing completion of your item set, start getting more aggressive. Artemis' damage output is usually not expected until it's too late. If you build her for hard damage like I do, always be mindful of your positioning. When it comes down to it, your damage potential does not stop at enemy gods. If you get an opening, do not be afraid to burst down the enemy minotaur. You'll be surprised to see how fast a farmed Artemis can end the game. One of the best ways to protect yourself against Artemis is by buying purification beads. If popped right after the Caledonian Boar stuns you, you can escape the damage that follows and be immune to Transgressor's fate. During teamfights, it will save your team a lot of grief if one or more of you turn to burn down the boar right when it gets summoned. The Caledonian Boar is easily killed in a few shots and can be killed before the second stun goes off. Thanks for tuning in. As always, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave any criticisms, comments, and future video requests in the comment section below.